All right, so third video in this live streaming broadcasting tutorial. It's about announcing, how to announce a game, how to prepare for a game, and how to call a game. And so, really in my opinion, because I've had the opportunity to do this for, I guess, the last four years now, as of 2019, and the announcing part, the calling part, that's not really the biggest part of it. I mean, that's maybe 25% of what you actually do. Um, you know, I've had a lot of success. I've been able to do a pretty decent job, I think, the last couple years of announcing. And 100% of it has been the preparation. So this is the number one thing that you're going to want to do, the number one tip in terms of announcing a game, broadcasting a game, is preparation. And what I mean by that is the game notes that you take, the statistics that you collect leading up to a game, and just the information, the data that you can acquire not only from your team but opposing teams so this is just an example of what I would do during any week throughout the season so this was um, week 14 class 4 state semifinal Smithville when we went to St. Louis to take on country day and so first you're gonna want to put your notes into a organized row columns you know places where you can easily locate and collect that information during games so that you could read it off simultaneously. So just quick information right here how, you know, Smithfield, they won District 8. MICDS won District 3. You know, talking about what happened the week before. You know, what's at stake, obviously, for state championship, but you want to go in depth on that. So, you know, this would be the first state championship appearance in 49 years. If MICDS wins, they're going to get there for the first time since 2011. You know, possibly who they play, what time they play. So, just the general information of the game. And so then you also have stats not only from throughout the season, but from the last week, since that's the most relevant information since it happened the week before. So you would, you know, for example, MICDS, like I said earlier, is a position, a place where you can easily locate it, a consistency where, you know, it's your receptions or your carries first, and then the yards, and then the touchdowns you can easily read those off throughout a game and use that to help you tell a viewer what to expect or what could happen on this play or why this player is so good. So then down here, Smithville game notes, MICDS game notes, this is just a lot of stats and general game notes. So a lot of averages, um, you know, max preps, the Misha website, this tells you how many points they average per game, how many they allow per game, their special teams, what they do on there. And then from there, you kind of want to go a step further for analysis and, you know, think, well, this, this, and this happened, or he had this many touchdowns, so what can I say to help a viewer have more information about the game or something like that? So, for example, you know, in my CDS, they were really good at their run defense. They had a lot of tackles, so expect them to commit to stopping the run, especially since Smithville, that's what they did. That was their bread and butter, running the ball with Brian Boy and Isaac Miller. You know, the coaching matchups, that's a big part of it as well. You know, their history, their records, you know, talking to coaches before the games, how both, you know, Coach Ambro, for example, he thinks both teams are similar. Just as much information as you can get in terms of helping you call a game and expand upon it, you know, because there's going to be a lot of times where, you know, you're going to call the play for six, seven, eight seconds, and you can't just, you know, be like a robot or a computer and say the same things over again. Well, here's first and ten. No, you know, you want to expand on it and learn to incorporate some of these bits and pieces of information throughout a game to help you be as good and as relevant of an announcer as possible. So how do you collect all this information? Um, just a couple sources. Um, I don't have them pulled up, but the Misha and Max Preps websites, those do a really good job in terms of game by game information, the points per game for teams, points allowed, whatnot. Um, local websites, you have 810 Varsity, they're a very good source. 
They have information of all the teams in the Kansas City area, especially the Suburban Conference. So they have all these player stats right here, rushing, receiving, you name it. And then they also have printable versions. So what we would do, we would print out the team stats and player stats for every team on A10 Varsity because they just had such an easy way to read it during a game. Again, you want to make it as easy on you as possible when calling a game. So A10 is a great source. Preps KC. They're also a great source, a um, little more on the Kansas side, a little more you know, of a bigger school size, but still a great resource. You know, They have all these past articles that you can use to collect and acquire pieces of information to use throughout the game. Um, you know, Here's a stat page from the Smithville Kearney game last year. You know, just all sorts of stats. And then another thing is, you know, this is going a little out of your comfort zone. Talk to coaches or reporters from other schools to get information on them before a game. For example, this was the head coach for Central. You know, we were asking them how many starters they have on both sides of the ball. That was relevant because it was the first game of the season. So that's a big um, talking piece that people were talking about. You know, how many starters does Smithville return? How many starters does Central return? From there, you know, who has the advantage? Who has the matchup? in terms of experience on one another. So that's another resource that you can use. You know, you can easily contact them. I mean, it doesn't have to be through Gmail. I mean, you can just simply send them a text or a message through Twitter. You know, it's they've made it so easy for you to be able to do that. So just, you know, one of the biggest pieces is just acquiring information and statistics and knowledge that you can use to help you call a game as good as you can because over the past couple of years, when a lot of people they come up to me, and fortunately I've had the opportunity, to, you know, to receive compliments and stuff like that, they'll say, you know, not oh hey, you know, not just oh you do, you do a great job, but also hey, you know what you're talking about. I don't know how you were able to know all this stuff. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but this will help you so much. I mean, especially if you want to make a career out of this, because that's how I think you'd be able to put yourself above someone else. So. Just a couple more things in terms of calling a game. The announcing itself. You have to, one, don't make it about yourself. Don't try to be bigger than what the game actually is. Um, don't talk a whole lot. You know, Don't talk more than what you think you should say. Basically what I'm trying to say is you have to have a feeling for how the game's going in terms of, you know, getting really into it, or a really loud voice, or maybe a little somber, a little quieter tone in your voice. You know, know how the game is flowing because you're not going to go crazy and yell and scream like your team just won the Super Bowl when they kick an extra point up 35 nothing in the fourth quarter. You know, you have to know when to say what. I'd say that's another thing. Um, and if you're doing it with a color commentator, you have to learn to build that chemistry with them too because you know me and James Larson he was the color commentator with me this last season we did a great job of building chemistry and you know talking before the games you know okay I'm gonna say this at this point in time and then I'm gonna say this and build off of that you know it goes back to preparation about knowing what you're gonna say when how you're going to deliver it and how that's going to impact the game as a whole so I mean, I guess a couple other thing I, things I'd say for the actual, you know, announcing part. You know, try to change up what you say a little bit maybe every now and then. You know, for, for example, don't just say, oh, you know, first and ten coming up with 850 to go. You know, maybe change it up sometimes and say, so, you know, for example, third consecutive first down. This defense can't get off the field. This offense has them just where they want. They line up in I formation. 8.50 to go in the second quarter. You know, just ways to make it more dynamic. And, you know, it doesn't sound like something out of a Madden game where the announcers are saying the same thing over and over and over because you want to make it interesting and intriguing to your audience as well. Um, I think that's all I can think of for now in terms of announcing a game and calling a game. Just make sure that you prepare and you put the time in. I know that's not the coolest thing to hear, especially if you're new to this. It might seem a little overwhelming, but the preparation helps. So you have a plan in terms of what you want to say, 
and how you want to call your game. Um, one other thing I'd say in terms of filling time, you can go to A10 Varsity. We'll go back to A10 Varsity. They'll have scoreboards throughout the game where they will have scores throughout the metro area. They'll have scores throughout your conference, your district. And once again, it's about being relevant in terms of, you know, keeping updated. You know, you're probably not going to want to, you know, say Lee Summit North and Ray Peck a whole lot because that's not as interesting to your audience. But perhaps Platte County Winnetonka or Kearney Raytown South, two teams that are in our conference, or I guess three teams that are in our conference and three teams that are in our district. Um, you know, this year we talked a little bit about, you know, Maryville St. Joe because we were just leaving the MEC. So those, those teams were still relevant to Smithville. So just, you know, find ways to incorporate information throughout the game. Don't try to be bigger than the game itself. And overall, just have fun with it. You know, don't try to be too stiff and uptight and make sure that you're not going to make a mistake because you're going to make a mistake. You're going to stutter one time. You're going to say something wrong. You're going to accidentally say second and nine instead of second and eighth. Just go with the game. Go with the flow. Don't get too caught up on one thing or another. I mean, it's just like being an athlete itself. Just learn to go with it. Be flexible. Be adaptable. And you should do a good job announcing. So hopefully this has helped. And if you have any more information, just let me know or let one of us know at SMN.